A 1.5 kilogram physics cart is initially traveling 2.10 meters per second when it collides with an ideal spring with a spring constant of 770 newtons per meter and natural length shown. The final time is defined as when the spring is at maximum compression and the cart is about to rebound backwards. Neglect loss. Alright, so I've highlighted the given the problem and also want to notice that there is, they give us the natural length of the spring as 0.40 meters as shown over here. So let's start by identifying the types of energy that we have at the initial and the final time. So at the initial time, the cart is moving, so I have kinetic energy. It's on the reference level, so no GPE. The spring isn't compressed yet, so no EPE either. At the final time, the spring is compressed, giving us elastic potential energy. In between these two times, there is nothing out, no outside factors um, adding any energy, so there's going to be no work. Problem also says to neglect loss, because there's probably minimum minimal backwards friction or drag. So I can put no loss, I started with kinetic energy, and ended with elastic potential energy. All right, I know for no work and no loss, I can go ahead and write down zero joules. All right, so now it's time to start um, filling out our given. I know I'll need to use the kinetic energy equation, so Ke equals one half mv squared, and the elastic potential energy equation, which is Epe, equals one half kx squared. So underneath kinetic energy, I'm gonna write the things I see in the equation, so m and v, and underneath elastic potential energy, I'm going to write k and x. 1.50 kilograms is the mass of the cart. 2.10 meters per second is the velocity. And 770 newtons per meter is the spring constant K. All right, so we know two out of the things in the kinetic ener energy equation, so we can go ahead and solve for the kinetic energy. So I plugged in 1 half times 1.5 times 2.1 squared, and I got a total of 3.31 joules for the kinetic energy which is our first answer over here. All right, so now I know that if there is no work and there's no loss, so I don't gain any energy, I don't lose any energy, this kinetic energy is just turning into elastic potential energy. So I'll ha end up with 3.31 joules of elastic potential energy. All right, so we do need to rearrange this equation to solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and show my algebra down here. So if I start with EPE equals 1 half kx squared. To solve for x, I'd multiply both sides by 2, giving me 2 EPE equals kx squared. Then if I divide both sides by k to let the k's cancel, and finally take the square root, so 2 times EPE over K is going to equal the X, which is the stretch distance. So if I go ahead and plug that in, so the square root of 2 times 3.31 divided by 770, I get a stretch distance of 0 meters. Let's make sure to keep three significant figures or more. So that's my first answer here. How far did the spring compress? 0 0.0927 meters. All right, it says, what is the length of the spring at maximum compression? So this is probably the part where I see the most mistakes, and we got to make sure that we know precisely what this x stands for. So x is going to be how far the spring actually compressed. So if I kind of take this down, this distance from right here to right there, that's going to be x. So the spring is shrinking by a distance x. That means to find the length of the spring. So I'm now looking for this length. I'm going to take my original length and subtract the value that I got for x. 
So 0 0.40 minus the spring shrunk by 0 0.0927. And I get 0 0.307 meters for the length. All right, the last question says, what is the spring force at this time? So I'm going to use Hooke's law, which says spring force equals k times x. I like to go ahead and write that underneath here. It's not in the EP equation, but it's related to the spring being compressed. So if I do k, which is 770, times that spring, uh, times the stretch length of 0 0.0927, I get a spring force of 71.4 newtons.